Good morning, my brethren. Good morning. Let us go to Deuteronomy 7. Deuteronomy 7 from verse 9. Deuteronomy 7 from verse 9. The Bible says, No, I'm reading it in the Amplified Classic Version. It says, No, recognize and understand, therefore, that the Lord your God, He is God. Remember, the Bible tells us in, in the book of Hebrews from verse 11, it begins to teach us about what faith is. And then it tells us that the patriarchs of old, they received a good report through faith. And then it goes on to verse three and tells us that the worlds were framed through the word of God. And then it goes on to tell us that without faith, it is impossible to please God. For those who come to God must first of all believe that he is God. So this morning we settle it in our hearts. We know, we recognize, we understand that the Lord, our God, he is our personal God. He is personalized to every man, every woman. He doesn't treat us like, you know, like we are clones of each other. He knows us intimately and individually, but we must believe that he is God. You must believe that there is no other power greater than his. There is no throne greater than his throne. That is the originator of every living thing. He's the ancient of days. Before the beginning began, he already existed. And he exists and he exists out of the restrictions of the, 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 the chronological time that we live in. He exists outside of time. He's eternal. He is El Olam, the eternal everlasting God. He is the one who is Yahweh, you know, Elohim, the, the creator of every living thing. Yahweh means he's the self-existent God whom nobody created. So we must believe that he is God. He is above every power, every principality, every throne. And then he says, number two, we must remember that he is the faithful God. He is El Emet. The Hebrews call him El Emet. El meaning, you know, the strong and mighty and powerful one. Emet meaning the Lord God of truth who cannot lie. He is dependable, he is reliable, he is faithful, he is consistent. He is the same yesterday, today and forever. He doesn't change the good things he did yesterday. He is able to reproduce them today and to do even greater things. The good things he will do today, he is able to do tomorrow and even do greater the things. And then the next thing he says, he keeps covenant. The covenant he has with us. He doesn't break covenant. He keeps covenant. The Bible says he is a covenant keeping God. This is very important because God says he has sworn by himself that, oh Lord, the covenant he has made with us is not reliant on us. The covenant doesn't depend on you. The covenant depends on the faithfulness of God. So because it depends on him, you and I can be assured that the covenant can never be broken. He's already made the covenant with us, which he sealed with the blood of his son, Jesus Christ. We are existing and living under the auspices of the New Testament covenant. And this is a covenant that cannot be broken. He keeps covenant is a covenant of redemption, a covenant of blessing, a covenant of favor, a covenant that gives us a new beginning and says he will not remember our sins and our failures is a covenant of grace. And he says he keeps covenant and steadfast love and mercy with those who love him and keep his commandments to a thousand generations. And then in verse 10, he says he repays those who hate him to their face by destroying them. It's not your portion. It says he will not be slack to him who hates him, but will requite him to his face. You shall therefore keep and do the instruction, the laws and the precepts, which I command you this day. And if you hearken to these precepts and keep and do them, the Lord, your God will keep you, sorry, will keep with you the covenant and the steadfast love, which he swore to your fathers. I want you to come by the blood of Jesus this morning and say covenant keeping God. I come by the blood of Jesus and the finished work of the cross. I repent for any sins that I have committed, any sins of my bloodlines. I repent of any transgressions, uh, transgressions, my personal transgressions and the transgressions of my bloodlines. I repent of any patterns of iniquity. 
in my life and in my bloodlines. I am pleading the blood of Jesus. And I thank you, Father God, that you are God. You are a faithful God who keeps covenant and steadfast love and mercy with those who love you. And you keep commandments to a thousand generations. Lord, I pray for mercy. Wherever my bloodline has gone outside your will, I am asking for mercy that triumphs over judgment today. That Lord, in my bloodlines, there will not be a repayment of evil to the third and fourth generation or to a thousand generations. I am pleading the blood of Jesus. Every evil seed that was planted in my bloodlines, I am pleading the blood of Jesus and asking mercy to triumph over judgment. In the name of Jesus, Lord, anyone in my bloodlines who triggered your word in Deuteronomy 7.10, that says you repay those who hate you by destroying them. Lord, we are pleading the blood of Jesus that, oh God, uh, let your mercy triumph over judgment and let the hand of the destroyer pass over our bloodlines, pass over our lineage, pass over our families. Uh, in the mighty name of Jesus, uh, cleanse every bloodline represented here in the name of Jesus. Uh, yes, Lord, uh, cleanse our bloodlines, uh, cleanse us of every form of unrighteousness in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. In Jesus name we pray. Amen. And it says in verse 12 of Deuteronomy 7, And if you hearken to these precepts and keep and do them, the Lord your God will keep with you the covenant and the steadfast love which he swore to your fathers. The good news for us in the New Testament is this, is that it doesn't depend on our own strength. God is not asking us to please him in our own strength. And I think this is exceptionally good news. But when we look at Philippians 2, 13, for example, Bible says, you know, it is God who works in you both to will and to do of his good pleasure. It is God who works in you both to will and to do of his good pleasure. In other words, God gives you the motivation to do good. He gives you the desire to do good. When you look at it in the, in the amplified version, the Bible says in, in Philippians 2.13, not in your own strength, for it is God who is all the while effectually at work in you, energizing and creating in you the power and desire both to will and to work for his good pleasure, satisfaction and delight. So do all things without grumbling and fault finding and complaining against God and questioning and doubting amongst yourselves that you may show yourselves to be blameless and guileless, innocent and uncontaminated children of God without blemish, faultless, unrebukable in the midst of a crooked and wicked generation. Even though the people around you may be spiritually perverted and perverse, Bible says uh, among these people, you should be seen as bright lights, as stars or beacons shining out clearly in the dark world. So child of God, begin to thank God this morning that Lord, I thank you that you are not asking me to keep your commandments in my own strength. For it is you, almighty God, who is all the while effectually at work in me. You energize me, Lord. You create in me the power and the desire both to will and to do of your good pleasure. The desire to do good, it comes from you. The grace to do good, it comes from you. Whatever I need to do in my life, in my destiny, thank you that you have given me the desire to do it and the grace to do it. Anything I need to do in your kingdom, you have given me the desire to do it and the power to do it. I thank Thank you, Lord, uh, for your great grace that enables me and empowers me to live a holy life, to live a life that is pleasing to you. Thank you, Lord. Uh, I'm not doing it in my own strength. I receive grace this morning to please God in every way. I receive grace to please God. I receive it for you, my brothers and sisters in Christ. I receive it for our spouses, our children, our children's children, our siblings, our parents, grandparents, whoever is around us. We receive the grace to please God. For 
for it is his God who is at work in us both to will and to do of his good pleasure. Thank you, Father. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Let's go to Romans 9. Romans 9. I'm still in the Amplified Classic Version. Romans 9. Let's look at from verse 15. Romans 9 from verse 15. This is the kind of covenant we have with God and is a covenant keeping God. If he says he will give us the desire and the power to do good, he will do it because he's not a liar. I believe it, child of God. You and I are full of holy desires and we are empowered to fulfill those holy desires. Amen. Romans 9 from verse 15 the bible says for god says to moses i will have mercy on whom i will have mercy and i will have compassion and pity on whom i will have compassion so then god's gift is not a question of human will and human effort but of god's mercy it does not depend on one's own willingness or the strenuous exertion as in running a race, but it depends on God's having mercy on us. Are you with me, child of God? It's not like those who have gone to the Olympics. When you learn how much they train, you learn how many hours they put in. I remember the year me and my husband read about Mo Farah and his training for the marathon. We were like Tofiakwa, God forbid. I would rather not be an Olympian. They were telling us that Mo goes to America because his trainer is based in America and he spends months away from his family in training and part of his training regime. I don't remember all of it because this was many years ago, but I remember reading that part of his training to build up that endurance. He, he would have to run underwater. And that sometimes he would pass out and they would resuscitate him. He would come back and be doing those exercises just so that he could run an Olympic race. He, they would go through so much effort. It took Usain Bolt five years of intense training to run less than nine seconds. That's the kind of strenuous effort athletes put in. But the Bible is telling me and you because of the covenant we are under. We were singing the song that is a covenant keeping God. There is nobody like him because of the covenant. God says, I will have mercy on you. I will have compassion on you. Nobody needs to contribute to the meeting. When I decide to show you mercy, I decide it all by myself. Nobody can say, but God, why are you blessing her like this? But God, why are you helping her? When God says, I choose to have mercy on you, that is it. It is final. He has the final say. And he says, God's gift is not a question of human will or human effort. It's not about what people have done. Yes, it's good for us to pray and fast, but that's not what makes us great what makes us great is God's mercy it doesn't depend on strenuous exertion but on God having mercy on us child of God we were praying last night with Psalm 102 that (laughs) you will arise oh God and have compassion and have mercy on Zion Psalm 102 verse 13 for it is time the set time to show Zion favor the set time the appointed time the kairos moment for favor is now we were praying to God now pray this morning and say Lord I know you will have mercy on whom you will have mercy you will have compassion on whom you will have compassion this morning father may I be a candidate of your mercy may I be a recipient of your compassion I receive mercy I receive the compassion of God For your gift is not a question of human will or human effort. I receive mercy, Lord. It's not about strenuous exertion. It is about your mercy. Lord, show me your mercy. Show me your mercy. Show me your mercy. Ragadoso Korea Babasia. Ragadoso Korea Bababa. Show me your mercy, Lord. I receive mercy. I receive mercy, Lord. I receive mercy, ragadosu kalebosia, masandele brodosia, mercy Lord, mercy that empowers, mercy, mercy Lord, 
in the name of Jesus. I receive the mercy that will lift me to the next level. I receive compassion that brings miracles. Uh, for you will arise, O oh God, uh, and show mercy, compassion on Zion. We are Zion right now. Uh, for Lord, the set time for favor has come. Lord, arise and favor your daughters. Uh, arise and favor your sons. Uh, arise and favor your ministers. Uh, arise and favor your apostles, your pastors, uh, your evangelists, your prophets, uh, your teachers. Uh, arise and favor them, Lord. Uh, arise and favor your people this morning. Let the set time for favor be now. In the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name. Amen. I want us to go to Hebrews 4. As we are opening that book, child of God, I discovered something that our God, he's ready to answer us very quickly. It's just that most times we don't place a demand on his graciousness, but he's ready. He's, he's a, he answers prayer quickly. Yesterday, when I got to campus, when I normally get to campus, as I step out of my car, I set my foot on the ground. I speak to that campus and I speak to that university. I command the, the, the forces that are in there to bow to the name of Jesus. And I, I speak, I always speak. When I walk from the car park into the building, I am speaking. I am taking authority. So there's a, a, an entrance that we use from the car park. That is a staff entrance. As, as I was waiting for the lift, I was declaring. I said, Lord, today I meet my destiny helpers. I meet my helpers of destiny. I meet, I have encounters with people that leave me blessed. They leave me carrying a blessing. These are the encounters I will have today. I call them forth wherever they are. They will come and meet with me and there will be a blessing to me. As I finished speaking, I said, amen. As my lift was arriving, the door opened behind me and a woman walked in. She's one of the seniors, um, senior lecturers in criminology. She walked in carrying books, seven books. And as we were greeting, she said, patience, do you fancy some books? I said, you know, I always love books. I love reading. Um, and we walked into the lift together. So I started to see what she's carrying. Child of God, lo and behold, I have some new modules that we wrote in the summer when, no, not in the summer, in the spring. You remember I was telling you about, we are going through a curriculum review. I have some new modules we wrote. And for those new modules, we need um, books for our reading lists. We're meant to be writing our reading list now before um, students come in um, on the 16th of September. So lo and behold, this woman is carrying my books, the books that I need for the reading list, the books that my lecturers need. So just by that meeting in the lift, I got seven brand new books. She said they've just been delivered yesterday. She gave them to me. I walked into the room where my lecturers are and I was saying, I have a book for your module. I have a book for your module. And look, seven books, exactly what we needed. We couldn't believe it as we are going through the contents pages, looking at what we're looking at, exactly what we needed. This is the kind of God we have. He knows, he knows who has the things you have. You're sorry. He knows who has the things you need. Sorry. Are you with me? What, what you need? He knows exactly who has it and he can bring them to you. We need to keep placing a demand on his greatness. You know, sometimes we are really struggling for nothing, myself included, overworking, you know, really overworking for nothing. When God has helped us, yesterday I walked into the office, the, it was clean. Um, on Monday, when our new member of staff started, the first thing I complained about is that one of the offices of my program, in fact, both of the ones that my lecturers use, they looked untidy. The first thing I complained about when I walked in is that this office is untidy. Do you know, because I said that, the new member of staff, the man that I was telling you about who joined us, he came early on Tuesday. On Tuesday, when I worked from home, he went to campus, went in early and cleaned the whole place. Yesterday, when I walked in, the whole place was clean. I said, what happened here? He said, I came in early on Tuesday before my training started so that I could clean. He cleaned. He rearranged the place. It's beautiful. He brought things from his home. He brought a tray. He brought things to decorate the place. God sometimes knows the things we need. Our helpers. 
You know, he says he will arise and show us mercy. This is the time for favor. The things that would have taken you 20 years to work for, you can get them today by his mercy. Begin to receive uh, and say, Lord, uh, let your mercy bring me all that I need. Uh, Lord, to make my life easier, to give me rest. Uh, give, let your mercy, Lord, uh, give me all that I need. In the mighty name of Jesus, there are people around uh, who can help you. There are people who can make your burden easier. There are people who can lighten our load, uh, even at work. Uh, Lord, I receive them. I receive that man. I receive that woman who will make my job easy, who will lighten my load. Uh, I receive those members of staff who will lighten my load. In the name of Jesus, I receive those colleagues who will lighten my load. Father God, the, the things I need, somebody has them. Even the money you need, child of God, somebody has the money. They can pay them that, that money into your account this morning. Somebody needs, he has that money. Yes, in the name of Jesus, while you are awake, staying awake at night, somebody has that provision. The money is already on planet earth and God can move them to send it to you. Lord, we receive everything we need by your mercy. Because this is the set time for favor. You will arise and favor Zion. You will arise and favor us. The set time for favor is now. In the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name. Amen. Child of God, I realize that the devil is a very bad devil. God is so good, but the devil, like I said, is a really bad devil. And every day I am learning that he tries all sorts to destroy people. There's something God showed me in the early hours of this morning. Unbelievable. I saw these people. They were doing a ritual on a woman. They had three stones. You know, like the stones that they use in Reiki. You know, if you've gone for Reiki, repent, child of God. It's not of God. You are, intro you are opening portals to receive all sorts of things. So I saw them with these three stones. And they had these three stones over the womb. And they were drawing like three entry points. For those stones, you know, like how surgeons make markings on your body when they're going to do, you know, where the incision will be. Sometimes they make marks on a human body. So these people were making marks on top of the womb and there were three. There were three. I could see they made three circles, three circles on the womb. And they were putting these three um, like Reiki stones inside. But by doing that, they were programming that person. They were programming them because the womb represents an incubator, an incubator that incubates the righteousness of God, the goodness of God, the blessings of God. But when your womb has been programmed by witches, you are going to incubate the opposite of what God wants you to incubate. Are you with me, child of God? So I, 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 I saw them um, doing that and I saw them do all sorts. I mean, all sorts. It was a really extensive ritual. Even I was shocked. I said, Lord, I've never seen anything like this. And I, and I saw they had all sorts of instruments that they were using to program. And then when I woke up, because I like to read a bit more, I said, Lord, thank you for showing me this. So I'm going to go online now and see if there are things called womb rituals. Because the occult now, they don't keep secrets anymore. They put it on internet. So I went and I saw that in the UK, in Surrey, in Somerset, if you live in Somerset, I want you to really pray. Somerset has a lot of rituals. I'm not lying to you. They have a lot of rituals. Most of the rituals we have when it's summer, when it's the summer solstice, when it's winter solstice, most of the rituals that are done in the UK are done in Somerset. Somerset has a lot of rituals. I saw that in Somerset, in Surrey, they have places where women go and gather and they do these womb rituals on them. You can see it. It's online. It's available. They even have photographs. They are dressed in um, like whatever they are wearing. They will always have a red thing, a red sash, a red garment and all that. And they do these womb rituals live and direct. So I have confirmed that the dream was not a hallucination that indeed I saw it. And so I decided to come and share it with us all and to pray because that's just one example. When you're talking about rituals, there are many different rituals that the kingdom of darkness is always trying to do. There are many of them. It's not just the womb ritual. There are many other rituals. But because the Lord Almighty has given us victory, I want us to pray this morning. 
Because we need to be in divine rest. We don't want Satan to be programming us or programming our children or programming our families. I want you to just combine the scriptures. First uh, John 5, 4. Whatever is born of God overcomes the world. And this is the victory that has overcome the world, even our faith. Combine it with First John 4, 4. You are of God, little children. You've overcome them because he who is in you is greater than he who is in the world. Um. Revelation 321 to him who overcomes, I will grant to sit with me on my throne as I also overcame and I sat down with my father on the throne. And we know in Ephesians 2 that in, in Ephesians 2 5, we have been raised with Jesus and we are seated in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. And so we want to know this morning beyond any shadow of doubt that God is on our side. He said in Isaiah 41 10, fear not. Fear not. Even as I tell you about these rituals, it's not for you to panic and be like, oh my Lord, oh my Lord. No, it's for you to take authority. Fear not for I am with you. Do not be dismayed for I am your God. I will strengthen you. Yes, I will help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. Okay. So we are combining this word of God as our legal grounds and our legislative declaration in the realm of the spirit by the word of God. The word of God is the statute of the kingdom of heaven is the law that cannot be broken because the word says we are overcomers. I want you to pray and say we overcome every ritual that is being done against us, against our families, against our children children we overcome those rituals is there anyone here that they've done a ritual on it might not be a womb ritual but whatever is the ritual father by the blood of jesus we renounce and break the power of all the evil altars all the evil sacrifices uh, that are performing rituals on us uh, in the name of jesus uh, we break their power father lord uh, we break their power any altar that has been raised uh, that evil sacrifices are made on you know in the uh, in what i so God was saying that womb had become a sacrifice. You know, when that did that ritual, that womb had become a sacrifice. We want to pray. None of us here, no part of your body, no part of your body, whether it's our womb, whether for men, it could be a different part of your body. It could be your prostrate. It could be your male reproductive system. Whatever it is, nobody is permitted to use you as a sacrifice. In the name of Jesus, no part of our body will be used as a sacrifice. We are pleading the blood and calling the fire of destruction on every evil altar. Any evil altar where sacrifices are being made, where our human bodies are being used as sacrifice, where body parts, organs, wombs, uterus is being used as a sacrifice, where body fluids, sperm, eggs, blood, pieces of your body are being used as sacrifice. Lord, we call fire of God. We purge it by the blood of Jesus. We say no part of our body can be used in any satanic ritual. In the mighty name of Jesus, you cannot use us in any satanic ritual. Father God, in Jesus name, we uproot all insertions those three stones, I saw them depositing. Father, we uproot them. We uproot them. We uproot them. Every evil surgery, every demonic surgery, we cancel it by the blood of Jesus. We reverse what they've done. We reverse and revoke it. We reverse and revoke it. We reverse and revoke it. We reverse and revoke it on any one of us, any of our family members, our brothers, our sisters, our children, our children's children, anyone around us. That the enemy has put things inside of them. Child of God, I want you to declare, because I'm an overcomer, declare that any implants, any spiritual implants, whether they are energetic or spiritual implants or physical implants put in your body, they are purged by the blood of Jesus. Begin to purge them and say, because the greater one lives inside of me. Greater is he who is in me than the one who is in the world. I am an overcomer. Any implant put inside my body, Lord, I uproot it. Whether it's a spiritual implant, an energy implant like Reiki, we uproot it. Or a physical implant, we uproot it. Father God, I decree and declare destruction on all implants, insertions, injections, evil injections, evil devices chains of bondage that have been deposited in people's lives let them catch fire 
in the name of Jesus. Father, whatever is being deposited while people are sleeping, let it catch fire, Lord. Let it catch fire. Ragado Sukalaba, whoever has an evil implant in their body, I purge it out by the fire of the Holy Ghost and by the blood of Jesus. Holy Ghost fire consume it. Ishanama Kurabasi, Majaka Bore Brodosi, Legado Siarabo Kurabasi, Makurenderebo Zikalabos. Child of God, in Amos 3 3, the Bible says, Can two walk together? Except they be agreed. Will a lion roar in the forest when he has no prey? Will a young lion cry out of his den if he has taken nothing? Can a bird fall in a snare upon the earth when there is no trap to get that bird? Shall one take up a snare from the earth and not take anything at all? It's no. Where there is a trap. It means birds might be caught by that trap. Where there is prey, the lion might grab the prey. What is this talking about? Can we walk together with the kingdom of darkness unless we agree? Do you know they get agreements, permissions in a sneaky way? You know, like those websites, phishing websites, that's still people's information. It says approve the cookies here. You think you're just approving that you're looking at that page. Meanwhile, they've stolen everything. Your name, your surname, your address, your this, your that. That's how the kingdom of darkness, they get permissions. And then you are sitting here going, oh, I'm Holy Ghost baptized. I'm full of glory. Hallelujah. I don't agree with demons. But you don't know that there was a day you agreed. It could be through the dream. You accepted something. Handshake, kiss, sex, food, visitor. You received a gift in the dream and they will say permission granted. We will now deposit our evil. Do you get it? Sometimes it's even in the natural realm. There are some people walking about on planet earth who are not straightforward people like you think. There are some people who have assignments. All they need to do is look at a person. And if the person looks at them and receives them, they will transfer something in their spirit. All you need to do is hug them. If you hug without discernment, they will transfer. So I want us to pray and say, Father, by the blood of Jesus, I repent and I renounce every act of agreement with evil agendas and evil assignments, whether in my dreams or in my working life, whether in my natural life or in my dreams or in the spirit realm. I repent. I repent, Lord. I plead the blood of Jesus. And I renounce every act of agreement with evil agendas and evil assignments. We have agreed to the wrong thing, Lord. We have agreed to what I was supposed to reject. I now repent, Lord, and I reject it. I renounce that agreement. I reverse the agreement. I cancel it by the blood of Jesus. And we pray for our spouses, our children, our children's children, our brothers and sisters in Christ. All the ministers in the church of God, where they've agreed with their enemy, agreed with marine spirits, mami water spirits, agreed with witchcraft spirits, agreed with the enemy of their soul. Lord, we renounce those agreements on their behalf. We reject it, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Where people have agreed with the spirit of death, with the spirit of poverty, with the spirit of shame, with the spirit of failure, with the spirit of lust, promiscuity. We refuse that for them by the blood of Jesus. We renounce all these evil agreements. In the name of Jesus, we will not agree. Father, purge any evil spirit food. Ah, Lord, any sexual activities, purge them, Lord. Any counterfeit gifts, any sex in the dream, Lord, let it be purged. Any evil callings and mandates and evil judgments, evil technologies, counterfeit revelations and counterfeit assignments by the blood. Let them be purged. Let them be purged in the mighty name of Jesus. Purge them, O God. In the name of Jesus, thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Let these evil programs be scattered by fire. In the name of Jesus, we want to also scatter evil programs against marriages. You know, I, I saw, I had another dream 
early hours of this morning, I saw this couple. The, the wife was being horrendous to the husband. And the husband was working on something that God had asked him to work on. And this woman kept calling him, come, come. He said, no, because I'm meant to do this. No, come, come. And then when he would not come, she was giving him ultimatums. So eventually I saw myself in that dream. I went to speak to that wife and I said, your husband has been called to do this. Stop calling him out of the assignment. Let him get on with it. So she agreed. But after she agreed, I saw her now in like an intimate um, interaction with a man, a pastor who is not her husband. And I saw that Satan is a liar. So I want us to pray. Every plan of the devil to divide marriages and then to provide a side chick, side cockerel. We are rejecting it in the name of Jesus. That we come against it in the name of Jesus. We want to cover every marriage in Christian dom under the blood of Jesus. And we arrest every demon that wants to divide and conquer. Every spirit of lust, spirits of adultery, spirits of cheating. Lord, we bind them in the name of Jesus. Where the water spirits, the marine spirits, the serpentine spirits want to bring confusion in marriages. We say no in the name of Jesus. As child of God begin to intercede. Maraka suka lebradosia, mazeke legadosia andarabosia, makure da bazika lebradosia, mazokoria baba baba basia, masuka lebakura basia, mazika legadosia. Father, we pray, O oh God, we cover every marriage in the blood of Jesus. We cover all marriages in the blood of Jesus. We deprogram the programs of Lucifer for every marriage represented here. Lord, no husband will cheat on his wife. No wife will cheat on her husband. We deprogram the programs of the water spirits. We deprogram the programs of the serpentine spirits. We deprogram the programs of lust. Our Lord, every lying spirit bringing division in Christian homes, we bind and arrest them in the mighty name of Jesus. Evil voices speaking to wives, speaking to husbands, we declare you a liar. In the mighty name of Jesus, every hitchhiking demon of lust, we locate you by the finger of God. We cast you out in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. In Jesus name, we deprogram evil programs against marriages in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Two, two more prayer requests. Um, we have a prayer request from Mercy. Um, we want to pray for her about a dream she had. We also have a prayer request from um, Lorraine in Zimbabwe. We want to pray for Lorraine. Hallelujah. Father, in the name of Jesus, we deprogram every program of disfavor. Lord, every ritual, every evil program, every enchantment, every spell, every hex, every vex uh, that has been made against your, your children, your sons, your daughters uh, to bring disfavor, to, to, to cover the glory over their faces. Uh, Father, by the blood of Jesus, uh, we deprogram that evil program in the mighty name of Jesus. Uh, we wash away uh, every evil that the enemy is trying to put on people's faces. Uh, we wash it away with the blood of Jesus. Jesus. We wash it away uh, with the blood of Jesus. Uh, we clean their faces, oh God, uh, from every evil deposit. Uh, every defilement, uh, every defilement, uh, anything trying to defile their destinies, uh, anything trying to defile their star. Lord, we cleanse it away. By the blood of Jesus, uh, we purge it, Lord. Uh, by the blood of Jesus, uh, we purge it, Lord. Uh, purge, oh God. Uh, we reverse it, oh Lord. Uh, in the name of Jesus, like we prayed, brethren, if you're in the dream and you are receiving things, you are receiving all these things, you have to repent for agreeing to take it. In the name of Jesus, are you with me, child of God? Anything you have received, you know, this, this, um, this dream that somebody had, that they were being given a baby who vomited in their face. You need to repent of accepting that baby and say, Lord, I repent of it. I renounce that agreement. I renounce that agreement by the blood of Jesus. I renounce it. I refuse it. I reject it. I return that prop evil property back to the head of the senders. Sevenfold. I send it back in the name of Jesus. Any evil property they have left with me, I send it back to them in the name of Jesus 
I cannot be their victim because the greater one lives inside of me. First John 3, 8, for this reason, the son of God was made manifest that he might destroy and do the works of the devil. Any works of the devil in our lives, in the dream, in the natural realm, in the spirit realm, we undo them in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. Rabo Sokorabasia. We undo it. We undo the wickedness of the wicked in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name. Amen. Um, the other prayer point that somebody requested, let's pray for their house. And of course, I'm going to be asking them to pray for their house themselves. The, 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 that <laughs> whatever has been buried in their property that is causing disfavor, is chasing away their destiny helpers, is bringing frustration. We want it to be excavated by the angels of God and let the fire of the Holy Ghost destroy those point of contacts. Whatever was buried in their house, buried in the gardens, buried outside the house, we, are, we, we, we excavate it. We expose and destroy it in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, in the name of Jesus, deprogram the programs of wickedness. Deprogram the program of wickedness by the blood of Jesus. We stand in the gap and we renounce the evil agreements that have been made in that house. The evil permissions that have been given to the destroyer. We plead the blood of Jesus, Lord, and say, show them your mercy, Lord, where they've agreed with their enemy. And the enemy has planted things inside their house. In the name of Jesus, we are pleading the blood. Let every evil implant be approved rooted, excavated, and destroyed with Holy Ghost fire. Let the angels of God begin to clean that house, sweep that house, sweep everywhere in that house. Children will sleep well. Visitors will be able to stay in that house. Destiny helpers will be able to come in, in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus. Man, brethren, if you have a house and you've never dedicated it to God, please do. If you don't know how to do it, ask me. I will send you the prayer points. If you have a house, you've never walked through all the rooms, dedicating it, walked around your property, all outside, everywhere. You've never done that. You've never cleared the spiritual environment of your house, underneath the house, in the house, in the foundation, even in the walls. My sister here is here. Sister Zai is here. She knows I'm not lying. One of our sisters in Christ had a house in South Africa. And what did they find in the foundation of the house? When the house was being built, when the house was being built, the builder was recruited by the kingdom of Satan. The builder must have gone to Sangomas and the builder was inserting razor blades in the foundation of the house, in the flooring, in the cement inside. When they broke this house down, they now found all these razors and all these things that had been put inside the house. They thought it's a new house, but this house was being programmed. Child of God, it happens even here in the UK. I lived in a house in Rochdale. When I moved into that house, I'm always doing night prayer. And lo and behold, there's so much spiritual warfare in that house. God opened my eyes and said, if you peel all this wallpaper and you peel off the paintings, you're going to find the upside down star of David. This house was dedicated as an evil altar. They did rituals here. They opened portals. They opened realms of darkness. And I had to address that. And when I finished addressing it, I said, oh God, I need a new house. I prayed and I left because that house had an evil foundation. So if you've never prayed over your house, you need to be serious about it because the house has things in there. The house needs to be, to, 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 to be brought to Jesus and to be brought into the realm of God. Child of God, I pray that God will help us in the mighty name of Jesus. There is evil occurrences that occur because some spaces have been taken over. I was talking to Antiza the other day. I said, God had been putting in my heart to pray about some of these dispossessed spirits that are roaming around. I mean human spirits. I don't mean demons. There are lingering spirits in some properties. They are not demons. They are human spirits that people think died, but they are not gone. They are lingering. And if God helps us, the next time I come to lead prayer, we're going to pray about it because God has been putting it in my heart. There are some properties that are infested 
they are infested and they've been given to evil altars. So may God help us. I, I need to round up this morning. The Lord will help us in the name of Jesus and help everyone who needs to do something about their house to do something about their house. Hallelujah. So thank you, Jesus. So once again, Lord, I want to cover everyone in the blood of Jesus and any work that still needs to be done. Father, you will reveal to your children and you will give us the wisdom for the prayers because you are a merciful God and a covenant keeping God. And Father, I want to put a restraining order. I want to put a restraining order on every principality, power, rulers of darkness, spiritual wickedness in high places, demons, marine spirits, uh, python spirits, serpentine spirits, witchcraft spirits, human spirits, hybrid spirits, anything that is coming out of the occultic realm that has been released against your sons and daughters. Father, in the name of Jesus, I put a restraining order on them. Lord, to give us the time and the space to finish these prayers. We can't finish everything in one hour. But Father Lord, uh, while we are praying, I put a restraining order on them. They will not be able to attack any man, any woman here. They will not be able to attack me, my spouse, my children. In the name of Jesus, uh, I cover every child in every home that is infested with demons. I cover those children in the blood of Jesus. Our children will not be molested in the dreams. Uh, they will not be molested spiritually. Our children will not be programmed for evil. In the mighty name of Jesus, uh, Shalaba Father God, every attacker where children have been dedicated to evil altars, we are pleading the blood of Jesus. And we are asking you for mercy, Lord. Mercy that triumphs over judgment. Whatever needs to be done, oh God. Whatever needs to be done, Lord, give us the revelation. And in the meantime, let the hedge of fire be around all your children. In the meantime, oh God, uh, let your mercy triumph over judgment. Until these prayers are completed, nobody will be attacked. In the mighty name of Jesus and Lord God Almighty, continue to give your children revelation. Continue to reveal the secret things uh, that belong to you. Continue to reveal, Lord. Continue to reveal, oh God. Uh, Continue to reveal mighty God. Continue to reveal all these things in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus. Thank you, Father. I cover every family in the blood of Jesus and in the fire of the Holy Ghost. I decree and declare no weapon fashioned against any of us will prosper. And every tongue that rises up in judgment against us is condemned. This is our heritage as servants of the Lord. Our righteousness is of God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen.